so better we have another question with the name of job lot and let's see what is this about job lot manufactures metal component it has two production department beta machining and finishing and we have two service departments as well stores and administration uh, so what is a production department actually production department are the department beta that are ma actually making the products and service department are the ones that are not producing the products instead they are indirectly supporting these production department in the production of those goods now what is the uh, role of the stores department stores department is there to provide the raw material to the department production departments okay so if the stores department fail to provide the raw material on time so therefore there would be disruption that would take place in the production department and the production has to be stopped because we don't have adequate uh, material so admin department again would be administering or monitoring these uh, production department now some information is given for the year ended allocated over it allocated over it beta means that this was the overhead that can be traced to these products uh, or to these departments so this uh, overhead was directly related to the machining so it shouldn't be shared by other department again this relates to the finishing and uh, this is the stores related cost and this is the admin related cost now the examiner has already given us allocated overhead and the use of the two service department overhead is given now why is this given beta because we need to reapportion all of the stores and admin cost to these two departments okay this third step is known as reapportionment we are in being asked for first two steps allocation is already given and there is no apportionment here and uh, apportionment means there is electricity maybe and electricity or rent or insurance need to be divided among all these four departments but there is not a here in this case and what we need to do better now we need to reapportion the stores and admin cost to these production department now the stores department is working 60% of the time for machining 30% for finishing and 10% for admin so what about the admin admin is working 50% for machining and 30% for finishing and 20% for stores as well now as you can see in this question better both of the service departments uh, namely stores and administration are working for each uh, other service department okay stores is working 10% for admin and admin in return is working 20% for the stores now whenever beta the, there is such scenario uh, uh, we use the reciprocal method okay there is a, a method known as reciprocal method or continuous apportionment method needs to be used when both of the service departments are working for each other annual hours for each department as, as follows machining department is working for total of 5600 hours and finishing is working for total of 2425 hours and out of that it's saying that uh, out of these 5600 hours only 75% is chargeable to customer jobs so this means 25% uh, of the time is lost due to idle time so whenever we are uh, absorbing the overhead of these two production department we would only absorb on uh, the basis of this 75% time and the 25% time would be lost okay and in this 20% of the time would be lost explain the term job costing what is job costing job costing means beta uh, every job is unique from other jobs okay and the customer has its specific requirements as to what they want from uh, your business okay and their product is unique and their uh, project is unique so therefore we need to collect the cost relating to each job and each job should be different from other jobs okay so that we can uh, actually find the total cost and we can uh, charge the customers uh, according to the work they require on the job so this is what was meant by job costing let's see what the examiner has given as definition and let's from the ms hmm. i guess it's question number three yes costing for a job which is for the customer's specific requirements okay every job is unique as to the requirement that has been given by the customer and therefore it is unique okay it uh, it is unique and clearly distinguishable from other jobs and priced separately so every job is different so therefore the costing would also be different and the pricing that we are going to charge with the customer would always also be different 
Now identify two types of industries that might use job costing. Uh, there are many industries and some of them are given by the examiner. Uh, for example, construction industry. So one uh, customer will come and he will say that maybe I require a single story uh, bungalow and second uh, customer would ask to maybe uh, renovate his apartment and third customer would uh, come forward and ask a quotation for maybe making a penthouse okay so everyone has unique requirement then there can be some engineering jobs okay we are making some machines for specific requirements of the customer then the printing press have different requirement for each customer want some uh, maybe want the letter heads to be printed some want maybe visiting cards and so on so car repair every car has different uh, uh, problems okay issues that being faced by the customer and hence would be uh, charged differently by the time that is spent on uh, uh, repairing the car or maybe the parts that are being used on the repair of the car okay overhauling and house building again there are some of the uh, different uh, industries that might use job costing calculate the total overhead using continuous allotment method continuous allotment method beta also known as reciprocal method now let us see how uh, the examiner has done this it's very easy and let us save the time and let us see the table now as you can see beta this is already given by the examiner allocated overhead for all of these department now what we need to, to do uh, the this stores overhead needs to be divided between these three other departments and then again this admin overhead needs to be divided between these three departments so first of all the percentage is given for what percentage is given for stores so we can start stores uh, first and uh, we can also start admin first it doesn't make any difference uh, but it's better to start the uh, or department first the department who is working more percentage for other department but the examiner has still uh, taken a uh, starting from this stores department so it doesn't make much difference because this is an estimate so let us divide the stores department on this basis what is the basis for stores is uh, 60 30 and 10 so what we need to do better we need to divide this store cost and the total of store cost is how much 25000 so what we need to do we need to calculate 60% of 25000 that is 15000 and 30% of uh, 25,000 would be 7,500 and 10% 10 of 25,000 would be 2,500. Now in this case, uh, temporary for now, as you can see, storage department is zero. Okay. Now the uh, originally the overhead allocated overhead for admin was how much? 27,500 and 2,500 overhead was just received by which department? By storage department. And this means better the total overhead is now 30,000. So what we need to do better now we need to get rid of this 30,000 overhead and the admin overhead needs to be divided between other three departments on what basis better basis is 50, 30 and 20. Okay, admin percentage is what it's uh, 50, 30 and 20. So what we need to do better we need to divide this 30,000 on this percentage 50% of 30,000 is 15 and 30% of 30,000 is 9 and 20% of 30,000 is 6. So as you can see beta, uh, in reciprocal method, the stores that was uh, previously 0, now again got some overhead that is 6,000. Now what we need to do beta, again the process would be repeated and this stores overhead should be get rid uh, of and what would be the percentage on which we need to divide the stored overhead again, it was 60, 30, 10. Okay. So this would be divided 60% of 6,000 is 3,600, 30% 30 is 1,800 and 10% is 600. So the admin that was previously very happy because they get rid of the entire 30,000 still got now 600 more. Okay. Now again, the admin will get rid of that. Now the question arises, sir, this process will keep on repeating. This cycle will keep on repeating. So when will it come to end and end? Okay. Uh, just remember, beta, whenever the overhead is insignificant and how can we determine insignificant sometimes the question will tell you that this much of overhead is insignificant but the general rule is that whenever the overhead in any service department is less than 100 pounds so therefore it would be considered insignificant 
Now, as you can see, the 120 was divided between these three departments, but and now we have only left with $12. So, the $12 overhead shouldn't be divided between the three. Instead, the admin overhead now needs to be divided to these two only machining and finishing. Now, the question arises, sir, what would be the percentage uh, uh, on which the admin overhead needs to be divided between these three departments? But the admin overhead was uh, originally divided by 50, 30, and 20%. So now we need to exclude this stores. Why? Because we just need to divide the overhead between finishing and machining. Okay. So what would be the percentage beta? Instead of writing 50 upon 100, that is total denominator. What we need to do? We need to write 50 upon 80. Okay. Why? Because 50 plus 30 becomes 80 and not 100. So 50 upon 30 multiply by 12 and 30 upon 80 multiply by 12. So we can do 50 upon 80 or 5 upon 8. It means the same thing and 3 upon 8. So in this way beta we are not giving the overhead to which department? Uh, stores department. Okay. So now as you can see the admin overhead was divided between the these two on the basis of 50 30. Now in this way beta we got rid of all of the overhead and all of the overhead is now being collected in only the production department and this was the third step known as reapportionment or apportionment step 2. Now uh, we have uh, this was for 12 marks. Uh, now the next requirement is we need to calculate hourly overhead recovery rate. Overhead recovery rate beta also known as overhead absorption rate. Now there's a formula for OAR formula as budgeted overhead upon budgeted activity. Now let's see what about the machining department beta machining department total overhead is being calculated as 83980. Now the question arises sir what is the base on which we absorb machining department over it now as you can see only one hours are given uh, for machining department that is 5600 if there are two types of hours given in the machining department namely machine hours and labor hours so we would see whichever hours are higher okay if machine hours are higher so therefore we take machine hours because in that case we are assuming that machining department is machine intensive and if the labor hours are higher so this means a uh, machining department is what it is labor intensive okay but if it's only one hour given so therefore we need to divide it by this but there is some more uh, complication that uh, we are being provided that percentage chargeable to customer jobs so now we are only uh, dividing the overhead uh, 5600 hours times 75 percent why because we do not need to absorb the overhead on total 5600 hours because these are the only hours uh, that were actually productive Okay, and the other time 25% was actually time lost. So therefore, what we need to do, we need to divide the total overhead on uh, 4200 hours instead of 5600. So that our budgeted overhead would be 83980 and budgeted hours would be now 4200. So in that case, we found this uh, rate 20 per labor hour. Okay, or per hour. If it's not mentioning per labor hour or machine hour, we can just write 20 per hour. Okay, so let us see about finishing beta. The finishing department total over it is given as 48520. And what was the total hours 2425? Uh, and out of that, only 80% was basically chargeable. So there were 1940 hours actually being worked. So we need to divide 48520 by 1940 hours. And in that case, we can get uh, up to two decimal place 25.01 per hour. Okay, so this is how we absorb over it. And we need to calculate overhead absorption rate based on this. Now, there is some other theory in this question as well. Let's read that as well. In the previous year, and uh, uh, ended 30 September 21, because right now the year is 22, the overhead for the finishing department was underabsorbed by 3800. What does the term mean underabsorbed? So, but whenever we absorb overhead on some estimated basis, sometimes we overcharge the overhead to products or jobs and sometimes we undercharge. Underabsorb means that not all of the actual overhead was being recovered by the work done by the company. Okay. So not all of the overhead that has been incurred has been recovered by making the products or working on the jobs. So the total amount spent on overhead was greater than the total amount recovered from the hourly recovery rate. So this means we were unable to charge the entire actual cost to the products or jobs okay so then the examiner is also asking that what would be the reasons for 
under absorb we need to tell the two reasons so the two that uh, that are most obvious reasons are beta that whenever we are working less hours than budgeted or we are making less units than budgeted so if the activity is less than budgeted so therefore the overhead is under absorbed and if the activity is more than budgeted so therefore it is an over absorb and there can be another reason as well and that is the actual overhead is being different from budget okay so if actual overhead is more and we have absorbed less so this also means under absorb now let us read the reasons expenditure and overhead is greater than budgeted so this means beta actual overhead is greater than budgeted why because we are absorbing based on budget but actual overhead is more so we are unable to absorb or charge the entire overhead to products okay actual costs are high so we weren't able to pass on the entire cost to the customers so uh, the maybe the actual overhead is greater than budgeted or actual hours were uh, less than budgeted if we are working for lesser hours we will be uh, not be able to charge the entire overhead okay so there are two these obvious reasons but there can be some other reasons as well non chargeable hours or maybe the idle hours percentage was higher than budgeted so uh, actually we thought that uh, maybe uh, which department we are talking about we are talking about the finishing department so as you can see now here uh, we are assuming that 80 percent would be chargeable so this means the idle time would be 20 percent okay but if the idle time is more than 20 percent so this means the proportion of uh, hours that we have charged was actually less okay so this could also be one of the reason that non-chargeable hours was higher or maybe the chargeable hours was lower hours worked on recoverable work was less okay so the chargeable hours were less or the uh, idle time was more or maybe uh, there is a low efficiency so they, these are the reason for under absorb and if the examiner asked for over absorb we just need to reverse all of these okay just need to reverse all of these now there is some uh, last requirement as well and it's relating to uh, last in first of let's see inventory valuation so the material used to make metal components are issued to production using last in first out and last in first out beta we are assuming that the raw material that ha we have bought the latest okay so would be the one that would leave the uh, warehouse first okay so this is last in first out and the material that we have bought the oldest would be uh, used the, in the end okay this is last in first out evaluate the use of last in first out method when issuing raw material to production now whenever it says evaluation so therefore we are going to write both of the points the pros as and cons as well okay so what is the benefit of using lifo raw material are issued to production at the most recent prices paid why because uh, this will be particularly beneficial in inflationary terms so whenever beta there is inflation that is prices are going up for example uh, we had one unit for 10 pounds then uh, it, uh, material cost 11 pounds a kg then 12 and now it's 13 okay so the prices have increased from 10 at the start of the year to maybe 13 uh, per kg at the end of the year so whenever we are issuing raw material to production we are issuing at the latest prices okay and this is beneficial why because using uh, the latest prices for issuing the production or for cost of sale and if we are charging the latest price to the customers so therefore the quotation to customers would also be more accurate based on current market prices okay because the competitors would also be charging with the current market prices so we shouldn't be charging the customers the older prices that were actually less so what are the negative points for using last and first out not accepted as a valid method by tax authorities and we can also write by uh, international accounting standards so there are some set of standards uh, through which uh, the entire uh, all of the companies use these standards and these standards are made by a body known as IASB international accounting standards board okay 
so IASB is the body that make these accounts so uh, it is not recommended which method LIFO is not recommended and FIFO first in first out and AFCO are recommended both, both by tax authorities and IS but uh, this is not acceptable by tax authorities so in inflationary times closing inventory would be undervalued and why is such uh, why is uh, that so so beta whenever we are selling the inventory we are selling from the bottom okay so in last in first out we keep issuing uh, the production from the bottom that is latest prices so therefore the closing inventory that will be left over would be from the top okay uh, the closing inventory would be undervalued okay low price and if the closing inventory is the lowest then the profit would be uh, if the closing inventory is less then the profit also would be less this is incorrect uh, in the mark scheme uh, if the closing inventory is undervalued so the profit also would be undervalued and this is not higher this is lower okay so better because of that uh, very reason the last in first out is not allowed by tax authorities because uh, uh, by using this method companies actually were reporting lesser profit and because of that they were paying lesser tax to the tax authorities so therefore uh, the tax authority then international accounting standards no longer allow the use of last in first out okay if perpetual valuation method is used perpetual means continuous considerable work involved in valuing inventory yes the perpetual method is very time consuming okay it is very time consuming so beta uh, alhamdulillah we are done with this uh, question okay so